How you doing? How about that trailer? Unbelievable. That was created by the incredible Ari Margolis, so find him on Twitter. He is amazing. Um, I want to thank you all for being here, and I want to thank everyone at Comic-Con for hosting us today. Um, as Chrissy mentioned, we have that Comic-Con special TV guide issue. You want to grab that. It's got flip cover, so we've got our entire Fringe team on it. Um, and if you want to check in with Fringe at Get Glue, I hear there's a sticker up for grabs. So you want to do that? And now I'm going to get to the most important part of our program, bringing out our cast. Uh, first, we have executive producer Joel Wyman. Mr. Joshua Jackson. Mr. John Noble. Mr. Lance Reddick. The beautiful Anna Torv. And the wondrous Jessica Nicole. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> All right. Um, it feels good to what be gentlemen. gentlemen. All right. Take so, the boy out of Canada. Let's just get look at all Canada. This. Oh, <laughs> do you guys see this? Do you guys see this? Oh, this is, is that white tulips. White oh, tulips. Oh, <laughs> Oh, like tulips. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Don't, put don't put the lights down. Don't put the lights down. What is it? They're white that tulips. Is... Oh. <laughs> that is just awesome. Well done, guys. All right, so as you might notice, there is somebody missing from our panel again this year. Uh, unfortunately, Blair Brown had a bit of a cold and could not travel. So, Joel? Um, we, we all miss her, right? Okay, so on the count of three, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little video of you guys saying uh, hi, you know, Blair, and then we're going we're gonna to tweet it to her, okay? All right. So we need lights so, up again, Mr. Lightman. Lights up, Thank please. you. Let's say we miss you, Blair, okay? On three. On three. One, two, two three. three. We miss you, Blair. <laughs> that is awesome. We miss you too, Blair. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, you guys are awesome. Um, Joel, based on that trailer that we just saw and a lot of speculation and discussion that's been happening since the finale, can you now confirm for us that season five will take place in the future? No, it's not. Right. <clears throat> yes, it is. It's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to pick up exactly where we left off in 419 the next day. And now there was some footage in that trailer that we haven't previously seen, <laughs> yet you guys aren't actually in production yet. So how did you figure this out? This was actually really uh, a testament to how much everybody loves the show that makes the show, you know, because we had to get the actors who had worked incredibly long hours to go and shoot, you know, some pieces of footage for a season they had no idea what it was about, and, um, and they or did it. it <laughs> or if it would happen. <laughs> um, but they, uh, we sent them stuff, and of course it came back brilliantly, and we sort of intercut it. That, that, that video you just watched, incidentally, was our sales tool to try and get us a... Uh, a season five so we could present to people uh, that needed to understand where we were going with the show um, to, give, to, to allow them to say, okay, I, you know, I love this show, to, to go inside with all the hard work you fans did to, to keep us going. So um, you saw it. We love you. <laughs> and, and you guys, you just, just joked about like if the season would happen. What did you guys feel? <laughs> no, like, no, that you, actually was not a yeah, joke. I know. <laughs> <laughs> what did you guys think when you got the, the 13 episode renewal? It was late in the day, so uh, <laughs> we were like, oh, okay, great. Yeah. I think it was a bit of shock. Well, you felt confident again. John is, John John's is the wise the old sage. You're the eternal optimist. Yeah. You always, you never drop the ball. But I, I, I think generally everybody was sort of happily surprised because we were right there on the razor's edge this year, even more so than any other year. So uh, it was a, <laughs> a good shock. <laughs> but it was the fans. <laughs> So, uh, how long have you known how you wanted the series to end? Oh. Um, well, I had ideas. Mm -hmm. 
since, since season one. Um, but, but those changed, to be honest, um, because you get, you get people bring things to the pie that you, you don't really expect, and then that makes you think about a whole different you know, way to go. Um, truthfully, I had two, or, well, two and a half versions of what I, what I kind of thought we should do for the end, and then I sort of decided about three, three months ago or a month and a half ago. It just became very clear, and, and I knew that was the, this is the way that we should go, and um, uh, that's what you're going to get. <laughs> Whether you like it or not. And, uh, <laughs> no, you like it. You like it. <laughs> so did you clue the cast into how this is all going to end? Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. which is really fun because I think that they, they in, in past years we haven't, right? No, um, no. Usually we're very much kind of, you know, uh, in the dark, and it's interesting sort of, I don't know, being able to, to kind of plot, plot a little bit more out than, than usual. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, the truth is, is that it's because it's 13, and um, you know, w we want to write the scripts early to make sure that it's, everything is absolutely perfect and, and the way that we would all want it. And if 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 I'm doing that with the writing staff and myself and getting across what I really want to get across, I want to make sure that the actors have enough time to bring their uh, ideas and, and uh, thoughts and n know where they're going. Um, you know, for the final season too, because they've, you know, they've developed these incredible characters and created these incredible characters, and I just want to make sure that they had enough, you know, um, advance idea. Warning. Yeah, warning. To give us the chance. Yeah, yeah. Basically, like, just as you guys want the show to end well, we all want the show to end <laughs> well, and to give us a chance to do our best job going into the final season, yeah, right? right. And now, um, this season is clearly going to be very observer-heavy. Um, but they might not be as bad as we think. There's some questions. They're much, there. much worse. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have something to tell us about how we'll actually find out even oh. more about this. Actually, stories. this is kind of a little love letter from us to you guys in, in a really, in a, in a fun, I think, and meaningful way for those of you who like collectibles. Um, is we, we, we decided, you know, that it would be a good idea to sort of um, get a, a book, an observer book, where it's September's type of concept of what he's been through since the beginning of the program. And this is going to be done by um, Tara Bennett and, and Paul Terry, who did this great Lost book. I don't know if any of you have seen that Lost book, but it's astounding. And uh, they're going to give the same treatment to Fringe, but it's going to be sort of all through the prism of September's impressions of, of what he's seen and, um, and, and what the characters mean to him, and maybe some things in there that'll surprise you. And, uh, we're going to actually kind of have it so there's a little bit of a contest where, you know, if you are early to sign up for it to get it, that we'll be able to, you know, draw a few names and, and, and you guys would actually, your names would be included in the book as people of interest. That the, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that September, you know, uh, is interested in. So, uh, you know, that's coming up. And so keep your eye for that. But we're, we're trying to really give you guys back so much because, um, again, you know, without you guys and, and the media and, uh, and your incredible support we would not be here and this is the little show that could and i can't believe that we're here <laughs> and uh really we appreciate it so much okay so on to some of our cast stuff uh jessica darling jessica hey um <laughs> <What's up>? hey <laughs> we never learned much about astrid in her backstory or anything like that but what she lacked in backstory she made up for in utter lovability when did you realize that this character was connecting with fans? In season one, when she didn't even have much to do. And, and so many people said, oh, when's Astrid going to get more to do? I'm staying with this show because I want to see what happens with Astrid. And I was like, I don't know, guys. I might get killed. So <laughs> let's keep our expectations very low. Um, <laughs> And, and fortunately, I think that the, the relationship that John and I have in real life translated uh, on camera a bit. And so this, you know, beautiful connection evolved in the storytelling. And I think that Astrid's first big episode uh, was realized because of her relationship with the doctor in Snakehead. And it was such a lovely way to explore, you know, this, this um, burgeoning friendship that they had with each other. And you saw how much heart she had. And it was, it was a really nice thing to have uh, had faith in. Because I thought, you know, 
I can get killed off in my first show. It's okay. There will be other shows. It's not a big deal. And I didn't die. I made it to the fifth season, and I still need <laughs>